My name is John Prevedini. I'm a composer, educator, and public speaker, working to examine unconventional facets of everyday life through a multidisciplinary lens. Today, I'm here to talk about making music from found objects in nature as a creative exercise in building a culture of environmental awareness. In this presentation, I'd like us to consider three guiding questions. First, what are the musical characteristics of objects that we find in nature? Next, how do we adjust our musical vision to conform to the properties of those objects? Lastly, where can these questions help us beyond music? Let's begin with the first question. What are the musical characteristics of objects that we find in nature? Almost all objects that we find in nature, whether natural or human-made, can be made into musical instruments of some kind, depending on how sounds can be made on them. Sound can be made through percussion, which means hitting or rubbing the object, by blowing wind through the object, or by attaching the object to a stretched string. In this way, found objects can be made into instruments that work similarly to all of the standard instruments of an orchestra. How do we adjust our musical vision to conform to the properties of those objects? Sometimes a single instrument can produce sound in more than one way. For example, two stones can be struck together or rubbed together. Bamboo stalks can be made into simple flutes, played with lip buzz, or made into pan pipes. Discarded fishing line can be stretched over driftwood and plucked, or bowed with a blade of beach grass. The sound can even be changed further with electronic effects. Where can these questions help us beyond music? Many influential cultures around the world have had musical traditions incorporating found objects from nature. In cultures like these, music often reinforces the relationship between people and their environment. In addition, looking for musical objects in nature can train students to observe their surroundings in more detail. They may start to notice changes in their environment like pollution, the loss of plants and animals, or the introduction of new plants and animals. Finally, building instruments from found objects can be a creative way to encourage cleanup efforts outdoors. Now, let's take a trip to a beach nearby to see an example of this activity in real life. We're going to see what we can find here today that might be of use as some musical instruments. Some of the materials that we find here might have more than one potential use as instruments. The key is to test it, examine what we have, and see how it could work. Different potential ways it could be used. You never know what you're going to find, so you have to keep your imagination open and deal with what you have when you get here. What I'm looking for, I have all the different families of musical instruments in mind. Anything that can serve as a percussion instrument, anything that can serve as a wind instrument.
found quite a bit of stuff here actually. We got several different types of shells, different sizes and shapes and textures. A couple pieces of driftwood, a net, some rope, a lot of discarded fishing line, which is terrible for wildlife, but it does make good string instruments, so better, better use in music than sitting on the beach. We also have a plastic comb. And I think that's about it. But that's plenty to work with today. My strategy for untangling this is to look for a large loose loop and I find the base of that loop and then I cut it there and I repeat the process over and over again and the more you do this the more that those loops that you cut, it frees up other places. And when you take the parts that you've cut off, these are long enough to be useful as musical string. Another aspect of, of this exercise to keep in mind that you can pass along to a student is untangling a mess of fishing line is a very messy and labor-intensive process. But just think, that's with the resources of a human being. Imagine being an animal and finding yourself tangled up in this mess and how much more effort it would take to free yourself from it. Right here at the center of this tangled knot, there was the hook that came with this fishing line. And the hook completely disintegrated and was completely rusted. It doesn't even, it fell apart in my hand. And that just goes to show how long this tangled mess of fishing line was actually in the ocean before it washed ashore. So think also of how much wildlife this could have impacted in the time that it was in the ocean. This is interesting too. If you look at the fibers of this rope, they appear to have melted. So it looks like this rope at some point was subject to a heat source, a very intense heat source, which melted these individual fibers. It's interesting, when you uncover these materials from the beach, it can tell you a lot about where it's been and what happened to it along the way. And in many cases, this could be an indication of bigger processes that are happening in your local ecosystem. Instrument building is a creative process. And when you dig through materials like these, the creative process can be a very powerful motivating tool for observing the, the properties of objects around you and can help make you aware of processes that are occurring.
I would like to conclude with this final thought. We need a culture that respects the knowledge produced by science. If our culture does not value what science tells us, then the science cannot help us. We need to build a culture of environmental respect, and building instruments from found objects is just one of many possible ways of encouraging and building that culture.